Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make rustic rosemary garlic bread. This is a recipe that I've been wanting to share for some time now because I got a ton of rosemary growing in my garden that I need to use, and I can't think of a more delicious way to use it than this. Seriously, this is top-notch artisan bread. First, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to this channel, and let's get baking. I'm going to be baking my rosemary garlic bread in a Dutch oven because what this does is it creates a steamy environment which helps the bread to rise better and then you still get that crispy exterior. But if you don't have a Dutch oven, don't let that stop you from doing this because you can still bake it on a regular baking sheet. Now here's what you're going to need. One packet of dry active yeast. This is seven grams, or if you're measuring it out, it's two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. You'll need one cup warm water. You don't want it too hot because it'll kill the yeast. So you want it right around 100 to 110 degrees. Also, you'll need two and a half cups bread flour. If you don't have bread flour, you can also use all purpose flour. The only difference is that your dough will be a little wetter and it'll take a little bit longer to rise. Also, you need one tablespoon sugar, one and a half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon garlic powder, between one to two tablespoons of chopped fresh rosemary. Now, if you don't have fresh and you're going with dried, just cut the amount in half because it tends to be a little stronger once it's dried. You'll need anywhere from half to a full head of roasted garlic. I really love garlic, so I've got almost a whole head here. Uh, but if you think it's gonna be too garlicky, obviously, pull back on that. And if you've never made roasted garlic before, it's really simple. All you do is cut off the top of the head of the garlic, drizzle with a little olive oil, sprinkle on some salt, cover it in aluminum foil, and stick it in the oven at 400 degrees for 40 minutes, and presto, you've got roasted garlic. Now I went ahead and mashed mine just a little bit with a spoon because I like to see big chunks of garlic in my bread. But if you don't like that, then break it up into smaller pieces. And finally, you'll need three tablespoons of olive oil. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is proof my yeast. I put it in a small bowl along with the sugar. The sugar gives the yeast something to work on. Then add in the warm water. Give it a quick mix and let it stand five to 10 minutes to activate. Meantime, in a larger separate bowl, mix together the dry ingredients. That's the flour, the salt, the garlic powder, and the chopped rosemary. Stir it all together and create a well in the middle of the bowl. Then go back and check on the yeast. In the time that we let it stand, it should have become frothy like this. If not, your yeast has expired and you'll need to throw it out and start over. This one looks great though, so I'm going to add three tablespoons of olive oil to it. Give it a quick stir and then I'll pour it into the bowl with the dry ingredients. You can use a stand mixer with the hook attachment if you'd like, but there's very little kneading in this recipe, so I'm just using a rubber spatula to combine the wet and dry ingredients together. At this point, like me, you'll want to switch to using your hands. Get it all pressed together. Then sprinkle some flour onto a clean, flat surface. Take the dough out of the bowl, and it's at this point that you add the roasted garlic and just work it into the dough as best you can. We're just gently kneading until all the garlic is evenly distributed and until we form a smooth, round ball of dough that's still going to be a little tacky. Now take a little olive oil and grease the same bowl that you used earlier. You don't need to worry about cleaning it, just get the oil all along the bottom and sides. Then drop the dough ball into the bowl, 
Cover with a kitchen towel or plastic wrap and place it in the warmest part of your home and let it rise until it's doubled in size. Depending on where you live, this should take about an hour or two. This dough has doubled in size. Doesn't that look beautiful? So now I'm going to just flour my surface again. And then I'm gonna take a separate bowl and I'm going to place a sheet of parchment paper into it. And this will make sense later. And now the fun part, we get to take out any aggression we may have by punching the dough. And now we're just gonna carefully transfer this over onto our floured surface. You just keep folding the dough over onto itself until you formed it into how you want your loaf to look. If you want, you can take a sharp knife and cut a slit across the top. This is just for looks. Now we drop the dough ball into the bowl with the parchment paper, cover it again with a kitchen towel, and let it rise a second time for about 30 to 45 minutes. Meantime, we're going to preheat the oven with an empty Dutch oven in it. Make sure the lid is on and set the oven temperature to 425 degrees. If you don't have a Dutch oven, use a regular baking sheet, but preheat the oven to 375 instead. Once the oven and Dutch oven are preheated, remove the lid and carefully use the parchment paper to lift the dough ball out of the bowl and drop it into the Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is very hot, so be extra careful. Put the lid back on and place it in the oven to bake 30 minutes covered. After 30 minutes, remove the lid and if the top isn't brown the way you want it, let it bake uncovered a little while longer, however long it takes to get your desired level of golden brown. All right, now we see what it looks like. Isn't that beautiful? I actually like it like that, but I know that you should probably get it a little more brown, so I'm gonna leave it in there uncovered for just a few more minutes. As beautiful as this looks, it can't even compare to how amazing it smells. My whole house smells of rosemary and garlic and the combination is just heavenly. I can hardly wait to cut into this, but I need to let it cool first. All right, I've waited long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this, but I gotta say, I love that you've got that crunchy exterior and the inside is super soft. Get a little bit more. All right. Mm, wow. I really love a good rustic artisan bread. And this rosemary garlic has to be my absolute favorite. I really hope you try it. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That increases the chances that others will see this video. I also invite you to subscribe if you haven't already and follow me at Marcy Inspired on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, blessings from my kitchen to yours.